Hi, I'm Tim, and today I want to talk about the SVS SB2000 Pro subwoofer. First, we'll go over a little bit of the specs on it. It is a newly redesigned version of the uh, previous SB2000. Um, it has a newly designed 12-inch driver, a uh, newly designed 550-watt RMS, 1500-watt peak, uh, sledge class D amplifier with a discrete MOSFET output. Um, it also has integrated uh, DSP and the sealed version, which is what I have, also comes in a pretty small package. It's something around 14 or 15 inches cubed, which means it can fit in a lot of places that other subwoofers uh, might not be able to. So first off, um, talking about some of the features. Uh, First and foremost, I would have to say that the DSP is pretty amazing on this for the price of the subwoofer. Uh, really, taking into consideration any subwoofer, it's pretty amazing. Um, it's all controlled by a phone or a tablet. They have apps for Android and iOS, which is really nice. I love not having to interface with the back panel of the sub at all. I can do it right from the comfort of my couch, uh, which makes tuning the subwoofer all that easier. Um, as you sit there, and in my case, I use REW, I can take a sweep of the room, analyze what it looks like, go on the app, tweak, you know, the parameters I want to try, do another sweep with REW, and I don't have to get up and go over and tweak and come back. Um, you can even tweak these things on the fly while the subwoofer is running. Uh, some of them, I'm not sure if all of them, I didn't try everything. Um, but things like volume, you know, you can adjust, the phase you can adjust as it's playing. Uh, so if you want to tune things by ear, uh, you do have that option too, which does make things easier because you can't really do that if you have to get up, go over to the sub, turn a dial and come back and sit down unless you have a friend turning the dial for you. Um, you know, previously something like that wouldn't have been possible. Um, and with that said, I do use pretty much all of the DSP features on these subs. Uh, I have a pair of them set up. Uh, obviously, I, I use the crossover feature, uh, and I use a custom slope. I use the 24 dB per octave slope on that, along with the 80 hertz uh, crossover setting, because for my room with my speakers, I found that that's what works the best. I also use the uh, polarity inverse. One of the subs, I have the polarity switched on it, uh, which puts it 180 degrees out of phase, but not in time, just the phase. Uh, I also do use the phase adjustment, which will adjust the timing of the sub on one of them to get it to mesh correctly with the front sub. And uh, it's pretty fantastic using all that, and obviously the volume settings as well. So, and the EQ. I also use the EQ to help with uh, a little bit uh, of a boominess that I have in this room around somewhere around 25 hertz. There's a resonant here, and it really bumps up. Um, I use the uh, DSP a little bit just to knock that down some um, and to tame it a little bit, which is fantastic. So the EQ not only will do one uh, frequency, but you can do up to three frequencies, all with different uh, cues, which means how wide or how narrow the band uh, that the um, EQ will be applied to. And you can also adjust the amount of volume independently for each of the uh, EQ bands which is pretty amazing. I've In this room, I only had to use one of the bands, but it does have that expandability that if there are multiple problems that you need to deal with in the EQ realm, after you've got everything set up and you've got the phase working, uh, you have that ability, which is really nice. And again, in a subwoofer that costs $7.99, to have that level of flexibility and tunability is pretty amazing. Along with the DSP being new to this uh, uh, SV2000 Pro series, um, the driver has been completely redesigned. Um, they've retooled, I believe, just about everything on this custom 12-inch driver to fit just for this application, for this box. So it's not that they're reusing some standard generic driver. They've gone through the painstaking effort of making one that's tuned for this application, which really does shine through. And I'll talk about that uh, when I get into my uh, sonic impressions of this towards uh, the end of the video. Um, Another one of the great features is the Sledge uh, amplifier. Uh, it provides 550 watts continuous of Class D power with the ability to peak up to 1500 watts. So that coupled with the long throw driver, you know, with it's got a pretty generous surround, uh, it can 
it, it does not leave you wanting anymore when there are big big hits in movies or in music. It's able to take them all with stride and uh, really deliver uh, an amazing experience. But back on the amp, it's not just a off the shelf, you know, class D implementation. Uh, they have designed their own discrete output using MOSFETs. So instead of using a chip on the output, they've used discrete parts to build it, which means generally, this isn't always the case, but typically when you see a discrete versus an integrated circuit, the discrete can handle more power. Uh, it can dissipate more heat easily, which means, again, it can handle more power and is typically more robust, which comes through very evidently uh, in this in this sub. So with all that talked about, um, I'll get into my impression sonically of this. Before I had this pair of SVS subs, uh, I had a single sub from another manufacturer, which was fantastic. It was at least twice the size, but uh, you know, 12 inch woofer. And it really dug deep. You know, it gave you that big sense of, of you know, um, control down low uh, and ease. And, and it was fantastic, but it cost four times as much as one of these. So for half the price of that high-end sub, I was able to get two of the SVS 2000 Pros. Now, digging way, way down low, again, with like pipe organ music or uh, EDM music that just has these like sweeps or, or hits that are extremely low, it might miss one or two percent of what that other subwoofer had um it it's not it's not noticeable if you came into the room and listened you wouldn't think it was missing anything the only reason why i can tell is i did uh when i first got these svs in i did do an a b comparison and in that it became a little bit evident that that much again twice the size sub um was able to dig down uh, the cabinet was twice the size which means it has a lower resonance it can play lower um did dig a little bit deeper but again not something you're going to notice if you're not doing an a b comparison also uh in the svs line they have a ported version and a ported cylinder version so those will also dig deeper too um at the expense of other things as well but in my case i wanted small and i wanted to be able to put them anywhere in my room because i knew i wanted a pair to try that out um and with two of them again they dig very deep uh but not only do they dig deep but it's uh, very flat and even even response because there's two. You can help take care of issues with the room, uh, with standing waves and things of that effect that you can't take care of with just one. So I did a, a, another video, which I'll, I'll link to in the description down below, about single versus dual subs and is it worth it. And uh, spoiler alert, in my opinion, it, it really is worth it um, for a multitude of reasons. And... Uh, it's, in my opinion, better to spend your money on two subs, so two lesser subs, uh, lesser I use in air quotes, um, as opposed to taking that same amount of money and buying a single subwoofer with that same uh, budget. Because no matter how wonderful that single subwoofer is going to be, you're going to have problems in your room where... If you're lucky, you'll get a single seat where it's relatively flat. If you're lucky. Multiple seats, forget about it. Um, with two, you can be guaranteed to get at least one seat that's going to have a nice, flat, consistent bass response that will sound fantastic. You know, almost guaranteed. Can never really guarantee anything. And other seats around um, will improve. You know, it... If you have four subwoofers, sure, then you have even more capability to iron things out. But again, I digress. Um, I couldn't be happier with the price-to-value ratio of the SVS 2000 Pros. Um, again, with their, the small size, they can fit anywhere. Uh, they're easy to sort of, you know, if you find that corner loading them works for you, you know, they're not going to take up a ton of space in the corner. If they need to go behind a piece of furniture, in my case, there's one behind the center seat of um, my theater seating back there uh, against the back wall, and the other one is placed up here in the center at the front wall, which is a common configuration uh, on the centers of the uh, of the two shorter walls. Um, but I did try 
opposite corners, centers of the sidewalls, uh, up in front, like trying to do a stereo pair. Um, but what worked for me was doing a, a, basically a mono pair, so they're playing the same signal, split across the room. And uh, the evenness that I get, the quickness, um, what else? Oh, I have uh, Magnapans as my main front speakers, which are known for their quick bass. Not necessarily really deep bass, but what bass they do have is very quick and clean and agile. One of the main complaints that I see about Magnapans and subwoofers are trying to integrate the two so that you don't get a muddy, slow bass response with like a really fast, um, you know, mid-range and upper response from the Magnapans. I find that the SVS uh, subwoofers do not sound slow in comparison to the Magnapans. And part of that reason might be that I actually also have a crossover set on the Maggies. So both speakers, the subs and the Maggies, are crossed at 80 hertz with a 24 dB per octave slope. So I really hand over quickly the bass responsibility off to the subs. And they play the, the bottom approximately two octaves or so. <clears throat> and the Maggies take everything up from there. The integration is superb. Uh, it sounds like, I won't even say it sounds like one speaker, it sounds like one cohesive sound image coming from the sound stage, uh, completely independent of the subs, independent of the speakers, and, and it's really fantastic, which goes to show that you don't have to get the best uh, or the most expensive of anything to really get great performance if they're designed well and have the appropriate features. Which, again, this SVS series, the fact that they've brought in the their DSP, which works amazing, and that can be controlled from a smartphone so that it's easy to adjust from your listening position, uh, is just absolutely amazing. And And what you get out of it is... A very immersive experience it's not bloated uh, it doesn't overtake the room so my room here is uh, 13 feet wide roughly by 20 feet long and about a little over eight feet tall and one sub would be enough to pressurize this room um, it plays plenty loud but again the evenness is not good at all uh, I don't have a ton of bass trapping in this room because bass trapping unless you're spending tons of money and you're getting huge pieces isn't gonna work what will work are multiple subs. And for my money, the 1500 bucks for the pair, because if you buy them as a pair um, off of SVS's website, you get 100 bucks off. <clears throat> that is going to outperform any single subwoofer that's 1500 I would say even 2000 or 2500 bucks, just because of physics. There, there's no way around it. Now, would a pair of $2,500 subwoofers, so you're talking about five grand, sound better than these? I would guess yes, because um, you're going to get, you know, again, that little bit extra in the amplifier. You're, you're going to get the little bit extra in the um, the design of everything. But the value, the price to, to output and quality, this series seems to really be nailing that line. That even after having, you know, other much pricier subs in here, I don't feel as though I'm missing anything. What I gain from the ability of having two and having complete control over how they interact with this room is completely paramount and really what makes these things well worth the money. So that's my uh, impression of the SVS 2000 Pro. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.